that Dintualo Anna Nana Makubele was due to give evidence at the Judicial Court Tribunal based on complaints that she breached the separation of powers and attempted to facilitate the transfer of money to corrupt companies. The complaint stems from her time as the chairperson of Plaza in January 2019. Unite Behind laid a complaint to the Judicial Service Commission calling on the body to make a finding of impeachable conduct against her. Zaki Ahmad from Unite Behind joins us now to unpack this conversation further. Zaki, thanks for your time this evening. Can you explain why Judge Zinswala Anna Makubele was set to testify at the Judicial Conduct Tribunal and what complaints were lodged against her? Well, um, for people who haven't followed this, in October 2017, Justice Nana Makubele was, in, uh, was interviewed to become a judge. Within weeks, she was also appointed interim board chair of PRASA. She was meant to start on the 1st of January 2018 as a judge. And anyone who knows how uh, the conduct of judges and, and, and people who would be judges, Justice Makubele acted in a way that breached the separation of powers. What she did was on 1st December, uh, 2017, she had a meeting where she wanted to stop a board, wanted to stop all investigations and suspend the lawyers who were doing the investigations into corruption and, and mismanagement and so on, maladministration. What happened is in her meeting, she knew and they knew that their board wasn't legally constituted. So mm -hmm. that's one problem. The next thing that happens is come January, we receive a leaked set of documents that shows that she's been negotiating with CIA, the CIA group of companies who basically took billions of rands from Prasa and now they wanted 56 million um, straight out of the accounts of Prasa. What she had done is gone behind the backs of her own legal department and gone to the lawyers of the other side and struck a deal. And the deal was basically ignore your legal, uh, our legal department. I will settle the matter. And don't, and she instructed the lawyers who was acting on behalf of Prasa to not have anything to do with our own legal department. Did she stand to benefit Behind from this transaction? This, I don't know. This, I don't know, but she was facilitating it. She was facilitating mm. it. Essentially what happens then is the, she uh, does a settlement behind their back. The money is attempted to get out. The legal department and the finance department stop the payments. What she then does is agrees with the other side that they should go to court and seize Prasa's money. Ah. The other side does that, and we have to step in because she's stopping her legal department from acting. Now, at that point, a number of other things had come into operation. In January, we wrote to the Deputy President then, um, Sol Ramaphosa, and the Chief Justice and the Judge President of Gauteng. And we said to them, listen, we don't want to make this a public thing because we don't want to undermine the judiciary. Please act and please get uh, Judge Makubele to resign, uh, either from the press board or from or from uh, her position as a judge. We were then told, please make, if you have a complaint, make an affidavit and launch the complaint. We still didn't do it because we, we didn't want to have this fight publicly. What then happens is this matter goes before court. Mm. She gives, sends a WhatsApp to the other side's lawyers saying Prasa lawyers don't have a right to be represented there and they must go ahead. So a number of things. She also gets a legal opinion which says her board was unlawfully constituted and that she as a judge shouldn't be there. This gets leaked to us and we leak it to the city press. At that time, Bladen Zamande, Dr. Bladen Zamande gets appointed Minister of Transport and she resigns the minute she, the journalists contact her, she resigns from, from the board. Now, Zach, now what did happen? Sorry, yeah. there, there are a couple of issues. I'd just like to, to fast track so we, we can go through the, the, the nuts and bolts of it, if you, if you will. Now, Judge Makubele delayed the tribunal by claiming, from what we understand, that she couldn't pay her lawyers. How did this impact proceedings? 
Well, you know, all of us get so frustrated when we have to pay for people who are accused of corruption or, or of mismanagement and the, the state pays for their, for their legal fees. Now, what's happened in this matter is Judge Makubele went to court against us, the president and the JSC. We had to spend another 100,000 rand. Our total costs so far has been over 1.3 million rand just in the JSC. We're not going to get that money back because it's not like a court proceeding. However, Judge Makubele acts like Jacob Zuma, the convicted, criminally convicted former president. She acts like Busisim uh, Mkwebane, like John Schlope. And three weeks of hearings took place in which the judge president of Gauteng, uh, Judge President Mlambo, said literally that she had acted in a manner unbecoming of a judge and that she was a judge and she should not be a judge, basically. That's what he said. In an affidavit, he said his deputy, deputy judge president at that time, Audrey Dwaba, tried to talk sense into her to try and get her to resign. She didn't. So three weeks of evidence was there, then led. Martha Ngoye, Fanny Dingitwayo, lawyers and so on, a whole bunch of evidence was led. She was then meant to give evidence uh, at, on the 31st of July for a week, literally a couple of, a week before, 10 days before, she sends a letter from her lawyers, oh, I can't appear because my lawyers haven't been paid by the state attorney. Now, in what world is the conduct of a judge who facilitates corruption, how can that be in the course and scope of her employment? It can't be. If she has a case to answer, she should pay for that case. So where does Not that leave things at the moment then? There's a battle between her and the state attorney about whether to continue this or not, um, whether the state attorney has to do it or not. The, uh, the JSC, uh, the tribunal basically said to her, come November 13th, you're not going to get another extension. You are there with lawyers or you're not there. Um, she's been on suspension for about three years on a virtually two million rand a year pay. So I can't understand how she can't afford her lawyers. Well, Zaki Ahmed, appreciate your time. Unite behind explaining that issue around Judge Anna Makubele.